Well, hey, Gundam Maniacs, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Gundam Breaker 4 open network test that happened this past weekend and my thoughts about it coming from a gameplay perspective, visuals, and Gundam perspective. So, yeah, let's dive in. All right, first off, I got to say, you know, the graphics look great. It runs great. I was playing on PlayStation. My uh, platform of choice is Steam, so I've got that uh, coming when that, when that gets here. Although Switch is great, too, because you've got... The handheld mode, and speaking of Switch, very interesting, in order for that to happen, um, you know, and I don't know if this was the case, it, it's very interesting, let me just start with, once we got to New Gundam Breaker, there was a different engine being used, and this is the same developers uh, through the Gundam Breaker series, and I think Gundam Breaker 3 looks really good, like for instance, we're in space here, in Gundam Breaker 4, if we go to 3, um, uh, a little lower resolution, but the lighting engine that is used in Gundam Breaker 3 looked a lot better, uh, especially when it comes to, I guess, a source of lighting. Um, let's see, a as the character moves around in the world, the shadows are forming and changing based on where they're at. There's a little bit of that in Gundam Breaker 4, but it's more of like there's static shadows going throughout the world in this engine. Whereas 3 just had a really awesome lighting engine. In fact, the the way the lighting looked, it was very contrasty and it made it look like the model kit was really a model kit you were looking at. Uh, instead of kind of the fake, flat, more cartoony shadowing that we're getting out of uh, Gunner Breaker 4. But I mean, I don't want to just complain about the visuals because again, it looks good and it runs good. And I think that's what's really important here um, when you're playing a game like this. But when you're playing, what are you doing? Well, a lot of what I'm doing here where I'm just kind of smashing the buttons, kind of figuring out how movement works. You know, I, I consider the Gundam Breaker games, they're not meant to be action gameplay first. I would say this is more of a Devil May Cry uh, made by Fisher Price uh, because it really is just button mashing but i mean there are combos to do in this for specific reasons although still it's it's still very basic and then also when it comes to uh, the different weapons you'll be utilizing and just to sum up the gameplay i guess is this is an excellent option for someone who doesn't want to have to learn how to play gundam battle operation 2 because of how hard it is in terms of mastering the controls the timing this game gundam breaker 4 is more of a laid back chill approach uh to being able to play gundam being a gundam world you know and a big key factor of this is the gumpla you know, collecting the parts so you can build. So another chill factor about this is you could spend maybe a session where 30 minutes is in gameplay and missions grinding and maybe another 30 minutes is just uh, hanging out and tinkering uh, with your build, making it the Gundam that you want it to look like, um, have all the weapons on it you want. But uh, again, when it comes to gameplay, it has all the basic things you would expect in terms of lock on, changing targets, so then you can do attacks using multiple buttons. L1 and R1, this is something that we've seen in the series, but also also with a lot of action games recently is they're kind of contextual. You hold down the shoulder buttons to uh, activate a menu system to do other attacks and other moves. Yeah, so in this, it was just a matter of me, you know, attacking, swinging, attacking, jumping, doing it at the right time. Um, again, nothing too difficult. This is the tutorial uh, area, obviously. Yeah, it is funny how you have a little SD buddy as your partner. I mean, in no world playing a game would I choose to do that. But, you know, that's how goofy this game is in, in terms of, like, uh, merging all the different uh, Gundam universes together. And so that's another thing about this as you're playing a Gundam Breaker game. Uh, you're going to come across a bunch of mobile suits that might be in series you've never even heard of. Or maybe it's a series you heard of and it's just a mobile suit you haven't heard of. And that's another cool thing about this is because you can learn about these suits and then go and collect the parts so you can actually build it and use it the way you want to, even when it comes to the weapons. You know, as a Gundam fan, I actually have already pre-ordered this. Um, it's one of those things where as a gamer, just a gamer, I don't know if I would necessarily play this game, but since I've gotten into Gundam, I appreciate, you know, what's going on here, and I love that I can kind of, like, jump into uh, the world of Gundam for a bit in a more laid-back manner that's more about celebrating kind of the overall uh, world of Gundam, like, you know, the Gunpla, the building, you know, there's co-op with this, more than just being like a straight-up story or action game. You know, we did get some story-based stuff recently. SD Gundam Battle Lines, a goofy one, but we got that, but we got also Code Fairy recently, that was a story in the UC uh, timeline. Just disappointing that 
uh, again, this isn't on Xbox, but we look at the developer uh, of the series and they have never developed on an Xbox platform. They have on Windows before. Uh, and it's one of those things where this is a specific developer that makes very specific games, usually contract work. Um, I think they're ex Capcom uh, developers. And so that's kind of what it is. It's like, you know, uh, Bandai Namco can get this done for a certain price. It allows them to do that. Um, I'm sure including some Xbox, uh, development would just cost more. So they're like, yeah, we just won't develop for that platform. And sure, they might not think with the cost of making a game like this to the market they are, they're going to get the money they want back. But I do think there's a missed opportunity by not having a Gun to Breaker game on Game Pass. Just having it part of the Xbox ecosystem introduces the game to more uh, fans, and I think that's important. And that kind of goes against what they said about games being released on all platforms, but you know what corporation hasn't lied to us before? Uh, and I wanted to bring something up here because I think during the live stream, I was watching video and kind of complaining that this boss took 10 minutes or something like that. Um, but I actually, when I was playing, I think I did it. It was like five, six minutes. Maybe I forgot. So it's not, and what I'm trying to say is it doesn't come off as grindy as I thought, even though again, this is the tutorial area and that will change. But from what I saw versus what I experienced, um, I really enjoyed it. So there you go, that's just about it. Uh, that is a look at the Gunner Breaker 4 open network test. Uh, game's coming like August 29th or something. Uh, coming up very soon. I'll be playing it. I'll be playing it for sure. If you're going to be playing it too, let me know uh, below uh, in the comments. Also, I might do some live streaming of it. I think that would be pretty fun. But anyway, let me know what you think, what your experience has been with this game. Um, and until next time, be cool.